What's the word, y'all? The Phoenix Suns are in trouble. They are down 2-0 to the Minnesota Timbers. And I know the old saying of the, the series doesn't start until a roll team wins a game. And I feel that. I 100% feel that. But through the first two games of this series, this Suns team is not looking as good as I thought they would. And if they lose this series, this would be one of the all-time failure seasons in in, in recent NBA history, now I can't tell you what's happening in the 70s and the 80s, but in recent NBA history, and you're like, Kenny, this is a sixth seed. If they lose, it's not that big of a deal. This team is favored coming into the series. Slightly favored, but favored coming into the series. There are people like me, stupid people like me, that pick the Suns um, against our better judgment because of the names at the top of the series, because of the play style of both of these teams. And in, in, in real time, it felt like the right idea but watching these first two games the Suns ain't even really put much of a fight up that's a stretch I'm sorry that's a stretch I'm being hyperbolic um there, there have been two and a half quarters in both of these games where the Suns look comparable to the Minnesota Timberwolves and then boom whether it be an Anthony Edwards takeover in game number one or a plethora of crazy turnovers slash Devin Booker saying review a play that was obviously a foul on him like a lot of things happen and then that that close game turns the snowballs into man are we down by 16 just like that Yes, time and time again. There has to be a study, an article, a YouTube video out there that, that goes through this, this new owner thing, right? An uh, owner comes into a team of sports team and say, hey, I want things to change around here. Sometimes it's like, hey, I, I don't like this general manager. This general manager is part of the last regime. I want my own staff. I want my own general manager. I want my own coaching staff. I want to reformulate this entire team with my vision in mind. Matt Ishbury came in and said, hey, sh should we just trade for Kevin Durant? And I again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. When you have an opportunity to trade for a player like Kevin Durant, you do it 99.9% .9 of the time. And, and even if they lose this series, I don't look back on the Kevin Durant trade and say, oh, that was a mistake. I don't do that because Kevin Durant is one of the 10, 15 best players in the history of history of basketball. He's one of the best buckets of all time. When you have an opportunity to do that, you do. Especially when you consider that that Suns team that he was deconstructing felt like they had, had run his course a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It had the finals appearance. Uh, Chris Paul was as old as dirt, so on and so forth. I don't look at that trade and bat an eye at all. But a few of the other trades after that. <laughs> Some of the other, like, you know, when you're running a team, you're, new, you're owner, you're not going to shoot 100%. Nobody does. If, if somebody did, they'd win all the championships in a row. But somebody trades after that, it been a struggle. But when you, when you tell me, that this team is going to have Devin Booker, who's widely renowned for the last couple seasons as the best shooting guard in basketball, right? You can have a conversation now who's above him. I'm not really here for that. But for the last couple seasons, it has almost been completely consensus that Devin Booker was the best at his position. Then we bring in Kevin Durant, who's not the MVP Kevin Durant that we've seen, but he still just had his most efficient season ever. Like, he's still a great, great basketball player. So you have two top 10-ish players in basketball and, and what what your resume is going to say through two seasons is that we have one series win and that one series win was against the Clippers who were without Paul George and then without Kawhi Leonard after game number two what that is a failure so you lose in the second round last year and again I, I believe that they played the second round re relatively well they had the two games against the Denver Nuggets where Kevin Durant and Devin Booker just were, went nuclear and I think that's part of the problem that we're seeing in this first series this year and we'll get to that in a second but you have one series win under under your belt and when you lose uh, in the second round last year it makes sense to be like okay this is what every team does. This is what every team does. We lose whatever round in the playoffs. How can we get better? Even the teams that don't even make the playoffs, at least some of them say, how can we get better? And in their mind, it was like, okay, well, we could add some more top-end talent. At the end of the day, there's no such thing as too much talent. So Bradley Beal, um, we'll take you and your $150 million contracts plus no trade clause. We'll, we'll bring that onto the team. We'll trade DeAndre Aiden, who was upset with the franchise in order to get used to Nurkic. And we'll bring in uh, Grayson Allen and so on and so forth. And we'll re revolve those players with minimum contracts. That should be enough, right? Then the season starts, and collectively, this team has missed 50 games. Like, there's 50 games of the 82 where they did not have all three of their players, whether it be Devin Booker out, Bradley Beal out, so on and so forth. But even still, when it mattered the most, at this moment in time, they're completely healthy. I know Grayson Allen went out in game number two, get well soon. I hope it's nothing crazy because I, I still want this to be a series. But you, you, you right now, you're gearing yourself up to be a first-round exit with two top 10 players. If you ask me before the series started, and I may have mentioned this on the video while I was making my prediction, um, sometimes... You, you pick your series based on who has the best player in the series. Sometimes in a playoff series, especially in the first round, the better player, the better individual player can win a series. You could argue, you could argue that the Suns have the two best players in this series, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Now, the way uh, Anthony Harris has been playing. <laughs>
I don't know if you can make that argument after two games, but you can really say that they have the two best players in the series and you go out and you look like this through the first two games. When I was making my prediction, I just completely decided to, to, to overlook the real problems with this roster. I'm watching these first two games and I'm watching Mike Conley on the other side who's past his prime. He's got a real team-friendly contract now. Shout out to Uncle Mike. Um, he's been one of my favorite players over the last 15 years or so. But Uncle Mike, if you're, if you're ranking the top point guards of basketball, let, actually, let's do the research. Let's let's do the experiment. This is not like any science, right? We're just, we're just going off top. So the Celtics have a better point guard. The Knicks have a better point guard. The Bucks have a better point guard. The Cavs have a better point guard. The Magic, you can make the argument, but I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying these guys are for sure. Tyrese Halliburton is better. Tyrese Maxey is better. Trey Young is better. So we, we, the Western, the Eastern Conference alone, we're down to seven. Lamelo Ball is probably better um, if he can get on the goddamn court. And then like you can make arguments for Kobe White after last season. I, I'm again, I'm just saying the definite, definite ones. Again, Kobe White has a real argument. Jalen Suggs is a real argument. Kay Cunningham, real argument. Um, actually, Kate is better than Mike Conley. So what's that eight? And then out west, we have, that makes 9, that makes 10, uh, that makes 11, that makes 12. D'Angelo Russell has, has been better. That makes 13, 14, 15, 16. John Morant, 17. So you're t Mike Conley is at the best, the 18th best point guard of basketball. At best. Again, you can make arguments about other people, but at best, he's the 18th best point guard of basketball. But I watch this team play, and I see the other team not having a single point guard in the rotation and be like, man, if they only had a Mike Conley, if they only had somebody that can just get things set. Too many bad pass turnovers. Devin Booker and Bradley Beal dribble off the side of their own legs more than any other NBA player I've ever seen. That's, that's what it feels like through the first two games. And if they just had a point guard, I neglected to talk about this. I neglected to, to really bring that to, to the attention when talking about this series. But it is a, a real problem. Like the experiment, experiment of saying Devin Booker is as good of a playmaker as a lot of other point guards of basketball. So we feel good about him doing that. They, there's been so many conversations throughout the course of this season saying Bradley Beal is our point guard. And Bradley Beal has, is a plus playmaker. But still, it's not just about can I make the right pass. It's like when things are not going our way, can I settle the guys down and get a good look? And there are a lot of times with the Suns, but that doesn't happen. And then you go to the offseason, right? Hypothetically, again, this is all hypothetical. The Suns themselves were a team that were up 2-0 in the finals and lost that series, right? So we know there's precedent to say that being up 2-0 in the series doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean it's over. I'm not saying that the Suns season is over, but damn, the first two games, they ain't looking great. So let's say they do lose this series. Any other team, when they go into the offseason, after losing the series, they say, hey, how can we get better? The Bucks say, hey, how can we get better? We're going to bring in Damian Lillard. The, the, the Celtics, who have been in the conference finals 100 years in a row, say, how can we get better? We're going to bring in Drew Holiday and Chris Stapps for Zingas. We go down the line. Every team that lost in the playoffs, um, OG Adenobi was added to the Knicks at the deadline. Even the small stuff, Max Struess and George Niang is on the Cavaliers. The Clippers traded for James Harden. I mean, it, we could go on and on and on. How can we get better? And if you ask yourself that question and you're the Suns front office, how can we get better this offseason? You just got to say, I don't know. Wow, look at that outfit. I could be wrong here, obviously, because I cannot predict the future. But they, I don't know what the Suns could do to make themselves, themselves better. And sometimes the idea of this continuity is not is not enough. Now, sometimes it is. The Minnesota Timberwolves are a good example of this. Last year, they made the playoffs as what the eighth seed or whatever, and they didn't do anything spectacular over the offseason. They had the, the luck of continuity, and now they're the three seed. And I mean, for the most of the season, they were the one seed, right? So continuity can work, but continuity also could not. Um, and some examples of that is the Golden State Warriors. I mean, they didn't make a trade at the deadline or do anything crazy in the offseason. Or then the Sacramento Kings. They didn't do anything crazy this offseason. They didn't do anything but bring their guys back, and they missed the playoffs. So continuity could be good or it also could be bad. Because Br Bradley Beal having $100-plus plus million guaranteed for the next two years, plus a no-trade clause, there's not going to be teams lining up to, to try to take on that as, a, as an asset. Um, uh, Yusuf Nurkic. It's not going to be teams lining up to add Yusuf Nurkic. It's not going to be t teams lining up to add Grayson Allen that will give you back people that can help you today. Like, again, teams would trade for Grayson Allen. He was phenomenal this year. But if we traded for Grayson Allen, I'm not giving you a real player because I'm adding Grayson Allen because he's the real player. So what do you do? You just go out in another offseason and say, hey, hopefully the, the six minimum players that we add this year are good because the six that we added last year weren't. It's just... just not an easy out. You don't have your own draft picks. Now, I guess there's technically you can loosen up the restrictions or the protections on certain picks and open it up, meaning that I can now trade this pick a second time, but now if it's between here and here, it's just, 
It's a lot. You're not trading Kevin, right? You're not trading Devin, right? So continuity might be the only recipe at this time. And I just don't know if that's going to be good enough. Because even on the minimum tip, right? Even if you're a minimum, like let's say you see every single season there's going to be players that sign for a minimum or close to a minimum that can go to a contending team and increase their value, right? Oh my God, I forgot this guy was really good, but he went to this contending team and played a good 16 minutes a game and helped them win a first round playoffs. If I am one of those dudes who's trying to rejuvenate my career to try to get it so that next season I get a real NBA contract, why go to Phoenix? Why not sign to the Celtics? Why not sign to the the Nuggets or the Knicks or one of these other teams that are just better right now? Other than saying like, hey, they don't really have any other good minimum players. So I mean, I'm, I'm going to get some real burn. But that's kind of it. So I'm a little bit afraid about what was going on in Phoenix, man. Um, And again, I mentioned earlier that maybe that team had reached the ceiling. But I remember watching the, the Cam team, the McHale team, the Devin team. And those guys smiled. They smiled. Um... <laughs> This team is not smiling much. So uh, you let me know what you think. Uh, could they come back and win this series? Uh, you let me know.